So tell me about uh, how did what, your teachings, like everybody thinks you're the black church. <laughs> Is that intentional that you're the black church? I know we've had Pastor um, Dr. Jeremiah Wright come. Right. We've had, actually, the most of the, the same, I, the only time I've ever seen Reverend Jesse Jackson, the legend that he is, is at your church. Right. Uh, is that intentional? That you have, is there some upbringing that, that kind of led you to, we got to weave in our black leadership, civic leaders, into yeah. the church? Oh, no doubt about it. Number one, one of the things that we experience in this country is psychological warfare, in that the images that we always see uh, are images of people who don't look like us who are supposed to be, you know, what? The example of what power, looks, wealth. I mean, it always is someone who does not look like us. That's, that's the power of Black Panther, uh, to see, you know, kids saying, wow, to see myself on the screen like that. And so for me, it began when you know, I grew up fortunately at a church where, I mean, my grandfather pastored and my grandfather, he was so, you know, radical. He invited Paul Robeson, W.B. Du Bois, when both of them were not welcome in this country. Mm -hmm. And they came to speak at Third Baptist in San Francisco. Uh, Dr. King, you know, came there. So, in a sense, it's, it's a part of my DNA. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I've been influenced by people from my high school counselor teacher, Homer L. Davis, mm -hmm. who, you know, taught me Afro-American literature and just, I mean, I met her right after my dad died. And so it was a very vulnerable time. But Miss Davis, through that class, kept putting these images in my face of black power, beauty. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm feeling that. Because every other class I was in, you know, of course, all of the images were white. Yeah. And so that's a part of the psychological warfare that black people deal with in this country on the regular. And then I read uh, and read and read and read. And the more I read, you know, it's like a whole lot of our history is not, you know, ever given props. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll give us Dr. King here mm -hmm. and maybe Malcolm to a degree there. Yeah. But we're not going to get a whole lot of us. And even Harriet Tubman, that's limited. So, you know, it just hit me. I have a responsibility as a black pastor who pastors a church, mostly black people attending, you know, I'm going to make it my business to make sure that the images that we see mm -hmm. are going to, what, equip us with the weapons necessary for this, what, warfare this psychological warfare that hits us in the face all of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even the whole concept of Mother Africa. You know, when I go there and see what I would never see mm -hmm. over here, I'm like, all of this is intentional. Yeah. Th this is designed diabolically to, you know, keep us feeling that we are inferior. And then I ran across Naeem Akbar and he talked about how in the animal kingdom, you know, an elephant discovers it's an elephant because it's instinctive. Mm -hmm. He said, so they get their identity from instinct, but human beings, we don't get our identity from instinct, we get our identity from images. And so if the images I see are always white as right and beautiful, and I'm black, yeah. then I'm, I'm made to feel like I gotta get back. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, I have an allergic reaction, for example, to uh, the white Christ image. Yeah. You know, because A, he couldn't have looked like that, and B, he did not look like that. And if the truth sets you free, that lie has been locking us up. Yeah. So, you know, when I invite a Jeremiah Wright, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, a, that, that, that's on purpose. Maxine Waters is going to be here in a few weeks. That's on purpose. Uh, and I can call the role of the persons who have come here, like you said, Reverend Jesse Jackson and so many others, mm -hmm. because I want, A, our kids to see yeah. these dynamic, powerful people and say, that's who I want to be like one day. And then, B, I want our people to see, you know, ain't nothing second class about you. You've been treated second class, but you're not second class. So, mm -hmm. so if God created us, God didn't create anything second class, yes, then I unashamedly and unapologetically are going to lift up 
you know, the brilliance and the beauty of blackness. And because I am pro-black, it don't mean I'm anti anyone else. Yeah. It just means that when you get here on Sunday morning, and when you are part of our ministries and the work we do here at this church, all the rest of the week, you catching all this stuff that says you ain't this, you ain't that. Mm -hmm. You catching hell because of racism here and racism there. Well, my thing is, when you get up in here, mm -hmm. it's going to be a safe place, an empowering place to be black. Wow. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. What is happening, and I heard you um, doing this because you talked about denominations. Um, as we get older, uh, as, as the church is advancing, community and, and cities around that have advanced, what is the role of denominations and does that matter as much? I noticed that Friendship West, it says Friendship West, but it used to be Friendship West Baptist Church and everything. Was that intentional? Yeah, it is. Uh, number one.